Now I can in good conscience claim that the ancient African god we know today as Bess is indeed the most ancient African god, but there is absolutely no doubting the antiquity of this African deity. Given his functionality and ubiquitous nature, a strong argument can certainly be made that Bess was at least among the first gods ancient human beings worshipped. <laughs> What up African world, it's on team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like access to full courses and sources, or you simply want to show your support, you may do so by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below. We know Bess because that's the name the Egyptians assigned to him, but I would not at all be surprised if he had many different names in other African societies. Unfortunately, we don't know the names he may have had in other societies. Bess is oftentimes represented as a short god with beard, broad nose, large phallus, and an open mouth with a protruding tongue. His unique features are in stark contrast with nearly every other Egyptian god, which is very interesting. It's almost as if Bess is out of place in Egyptian society. One cannot resist the idea that Bess is some sort of representation of the Twa or Mbuti people from Inner Africa. The Egyptians seemingly thought of the Twa people as being magical people, possessing not only entertainment value but spiritual significance. The Twa would have no doubt seemed odd to the Egyptians as they were very short, and I can imagine that all manner of esoteric or spiritual things were assigned to their humanity. I think an argument can be made that the discovery of the Twa or Mbuti people by other Africans contains the origin of the god Bess. Who knows? But for the ancient Egyptians, Bess represented many things. He can be considered the god of all things if you will. He was called upon for various functions throughout Nile Valley society. In my personal opinion, Bess is the most undervalued Egyptian deity in popular culture today. He was a very important figure in the Nile Valley, not because of popularity, but because his function was so ingrained in Nile Valley existence that you might even forget he's there. In many ways, Bess was the quintessential African deity because he supplied the needs of everyday African life. I'll touch on that a little later, but let's dive more into the history of Bess. The image of Bess, with his short stature and broad features, can be seen among other cultures in Africa and even in Mesopotamia. Bess is so ancient that some scholars believe that he sits at the door of the beginnings of human involvement with carving images that reflected the most intense desires of the human community for communication with the mysterious. The image of Bess is very interesting to me because as I studied African history and world history in general, I would constantly run into oral traditions concerning people who moved into a new area claiming that the original inhabitants were a short, dark people. This oral history is present not just in Africa, but especially all over the world. I can imagine that newcomers to the region would have perhaps found these people very interesting and mysterious, and even though they probably eventually wiped them out, they honored their existence and the mystery of their origin, hence why we have Bess. Now of course I can't prove my theory, but I think it's plausible. Either way, Bess is no doubt one of the most ancient figures in human history. I'd like to think that he's one of the very few visual representations of our primordial human past. When it comes to the functionality of Bess, it gets even more interesting. There aren't many gods who are assigned so many roles and tasks as much as Bess. Various representations of Bess reflect the beliefs and attitudes of the artist carving the image at the time. For instance, there are portrayals of Bess with a cape of lion skin, with a very high headdress, and with knives and musical instruments. Sometimes he is shown with hieroglyphs indicating his protective powers. Thus, Bess is a multi-dimensional god with numerous functions. He could be called on as an energetic defender of the community, as a symbol of majesty, as a hunter or an explorer, or as a musician and these are just a few of his activities. But Bess is more often called upon to be the god of childbirth. One of humanity's first challenges was surviving childbirth, whether it be the survival of the child or the mother. 
The survival of either of them was almost a miracle, and Bess was there from the very beginning, establishing himself as a protective figure. Mothers went into labor with Bess by their sides. When they gave birth to children, the first deity to bless them was often Bess. One can still see examples of Bess on the walls of temples in the Nile Valley. At the great temple of Komombo, one can see evidence of the presence of Bess as the deity welcoming the newborn child into the world. Bess was the earliest comforter of the sick, the disabled, the perplexed, and the birthing mother. The joy with which people embraced him furthered his influence as the merrymaker and the creative force for good and happiness. It's comparable to the function of the Twa people in ancient Egypt, to lighten the mood and bring joy and happiness, a psychological tool if you will. It's known that Bess was depicted on statues and in reliefs with increasing frequency as the Egyptians found themselves invaded by others. Because of this, Bess was also advanced as a patron of war and the protector of hunters. Bess was a god for all things, a god to bring peace, happiness, and comfort in all areas of human activity. If snakes came into your house, Bess would be there to strangle them. Bess cared about the smallest things, but ironically, because he was all things, he didn't quite reach high status in popular culture today because we simply didn't understand the great admiration he had amongst Nile Valley people. In the hearts of a child, a mother, a father, and a king, Bess was perhaps the most beloved. His diversity of function and purpose is why I believe he is among the first gods of humanity. As Africans move throughout the continent and even the world, the godlike protections and tasks of Bess increased as he continually met the psychological needs of African people. Bess is a very special part of African religion and remains a key player in understanding the continent's spirituality. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.